motivation. I might be struggling to find some motivation as it's winter in the northern hemisphere. I might just live in a big city, I might just be like struggling to think what why should I ride today? So I've um here's a clip of me riding to Regent's Park. So if you live in London you might know, but if not, it's quite a good park to train in, quite a lot of people cycle there. Um, so I live in central London, and for me to get out into the lanes, it's about an hour and a half or something. What the hell is that car doing driving alongside the road? But anyway, um, so often there's a lot of lack of motivation for me, because I'm just like, I just can't be bothered, because you just know you're just going to be like going through traffic, accelerating, decelerating, and you're just like, meh, I can't really be bothered. But you got to think like, you're in a very lucky situation, you can ride your bike, you love riding your bike, you got you have some time to do it, you don't have to be working at this moment in time, so, you know what, just go out and do it, like, there's a reason you like riding your bike, and for me, I like smashing up hills, just, like, when you're in peak form, just flying up mountains, it just feels so nice, and you've got to think, like, you don't get into that form by just messing around, doing, like, an hour ride here or there, you've got to, like, be, have structured training, just work hard, and just ride your bike more often, so often, yeah, it, I do struggle with a bit of motivation, also, the problem I also have is that in London there aren't many places you can do 20 minute intervals, so the turbo trainer is, well, I hate using the turbo trainer, but often it's the only, only option you have, um, but that again is just like, it's just simple motivation, like, you can either pretend that it's going to hurt and you don't like it or you can realize that if you want to be a better cyclist if you want to do if you want to get better you just got to put the work in and just just do it like that's the thing it's just hard enough realize it's going to be annoying but just actually do it like obviously yeah if you, if there's a reason you're lacking motivation because your legs really hurt or you feel like the training session won't be beneficial because you're so tired then yeah just don't do it but if you're just sort of having like that waning like mm, not sure if I can be bothered which especially for me happens in winter you just gotta just gotta realize like you'll feel better after doing it otherwise you'll just like wallow in self-pity at home being like no oh, well you know mm, such a harsh life or whatever but it's like to be honest you just gotta just gotta gotta do it because there's good benefits for it um so as you can see doing a bit of commuting here and like the accelerations really do tie your legs out. Um, it just gets really, really annoying. Um, but you've got to, you've just got to accept that's part of life. This is where you live. At the moment, I live at home, so I don't really have much, much choice of where I can live. Um, but you know, this is this is where you've got to make the most of it. I mean, there there are people who are professional riders who live in London. So I mean, if they can do it, they can reach a very high level of fitness. So can you. There's not really many excuses to be honest. Like. You just have to use what you've got. Um, and when you do have time to go somewhere else, then go go to a different place to train and make sure you train really, really hard there. So when you come back to London, where it's harder to train, that you have that motivation. Like, pick things to give you motivation. Like, if you're just riding for, like, the sake of riding, then you obviously your, your focus and determination to ride every day and hit certain numbers is going to be diminished. But when you really come up with a goal, you're like, right, I've got a hill climb, let's say, in a month's time, it's two minutes, or like a minute and a half, I just need to do that, then you're like, right, let's go to the hill, and just smash intervals up it, and that's what I did, and I got a good result, and I was quite happy with that, um, but I think without that structure, would I be really wanting to smash it over 400 skis, relative, like, for six laps up it, for like two minutes, no, probably not, because it hurts quite a lot, but when you're like, I want to do this, and also the thing is, there's something nice about suffering, like, the endurance rides I know are harder to motivate yourself, and a lot of professional riders say this as well, they don't like doing seven hours in the saddle, six hours, but when it's really high intensity, it's not too bad, because you just know it's going to hurt, but there's something quite nice about it, so I think, on those rides, you just got to get out there, ignore the hurt, and just be like, right, this is life, and on the endurance rides, just go somewhere different, just like, I don't know, I find that often, if you just don't have to be back by a certain time, you don't have to stress, you can just be like, so maybe you wake up a bit earlier, leave earlier than you have to, so let's say you have five hours to ride, do it, pick a four hour ride, and then that means that you want, there's no stress, there's no panic that you have to get back, and you can just relax a bit more, enjoy the ride, and also with endurance rides, you don't need to smash yourself, just like, as long as you do the hours done, and stay roughly in zone two, and not too much zone one or zone three, then it, that's fine, that's just, 
is all you really need to do, to be honest. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of people try and on their zone two rides really like bury themselves, and there's just there's just no need to be honest. You just need to get the hours done um, and just enjoy yourself, to be honest. That's the, that's the main thing. So when you're commuting through the city, just I normally have my headphones on, listening to the tunes, like looking at all these people stuck in traffic. I'm just like, you know, I'm happy I'm on my bike. This is a lovely ride, actually. It was um, late September. It was getting dark by the time I finished, but it was really good. Like, there was some good lads at Re Regent's Park. Had a good smash round. And, like, at the end of it, I felt I felt really good. I'd just been working before. But I was like, it was so easy that when you're finished work, you're like, nah, I'm quite tired. Don't really want to don't really want to do anything, but you're like, nah, I've got to train, because in the summer, when I really want to race, and when I really want to be in peak form, you can't suddenly just flick a switch and just suddenly get up to like 340, 340 watts or 20 minutes or whatever, which is the old goal for this season, you can't just suddenly do it, you've got to, you've got to put in the hard yards, you've got to be training from, like, you know, have some rest, and like, maybe not, not every week has to be an absolute killer week, but it's just the consistency of training constantly, and the more you train, the more you just get used to it, and the more you realize that like this is um this is what you want to do it, and this is like how you you feel a lot better when you train more consistently because you get into a habit of doing it. you realize this is what this is what it's like um this is how you're gonna get better if you just keep training the whole time um so I really really feel like when you do like a twenty hour week you feel so much better afterwards, like, yeah, your legs might feel tired, but you're like, yeah, this is really good, I really enjoyed that week, or when you're sort of doing less committed, you're like, meh, I can't be bothered, because if I miss this day, I'm gonna have a day off tomorrow, it doesn't matter, but when you're like, right, I'm gonna ride every day, I have one rest day, and every other day, I'm gonna do this, and then that day, I'm gonna do intervals, and whatever, and it's all planned out, and you can see where your goals are, it gives you a lot more motivation, but the other thing is, is like, if you are just feeling like, I just can't be bothered to ride, You've got to think, like, why is that? Are you tired? Like, if you're tired, yeah, have a day off straight away. And just allow yourself to relax, because there's no point doing a session. Maybe endurance, not as much, but especially the interval sessions. Like, there's just no point absolutely killing yourself, hitting rubbish numbers, and then feeling like, oh, well, I'm really tired now. And then you have to have three days off the bike. Just have one day off the bike, or maybe just do a small, like, two-hour ride, nothing too, too intense. And then the next day, you'll feel so much better, and you'll be like, right, I'm refreshed. Or the other thing is just have like, you, as you if you're not planning your training very well, you might have just reached the end of like a hard training block, which you haven't really realised, let's say you've done five solid weeks, maybe like 10, 15 hour weeks, and you're like, right, and you're only used to maybe like less than 10 hours, and so it's a big, big increase in training volume, I'd say. Then have a week off, have like a five hour week with a bit of intensity, but mainly just chilling, maybe go for your favourite Strava segment, because you'll have some form, um... Just do that and regain your motivation. And then when you come back, you'll be like, right, here we go again. Let's let's smash it out. And I think the other thing for motivation is just test yourself regularly. Like, you might hate doing an FTP test, but it actually let, lets you know if you're getting better or not. Because I often feel like a lot of athletes, including me, and people on YouTube, you see, they don't like to do tests. They say, it like, oh, yeah, I'm a... The number of people I'm like, are like, oh, I'm 5 watts per kilo FTP. And it's like, mate, you haven't tested for about a year. You were at 1.5 watts per kilo FTP. Now you may not be. Now you may be higher. Like, me, for instance, I've done 300 watts for 20 minutes. So that's 5 watts per kilo. And I did an FTP test in, what was it? It was like September, which said I had an FTP of 5 watts per kilo. But I was using the 8-minute protocol. So, I mean, like, at the moment, if someone's like, what's your FTP? I'm like, I have 5 watts per kilo, mate. But... In reality, I sort of know it's not, um, because I did like 330 watts for seven minutes on the flat the other day, and I was um, I was struggling. And the the on my FTP test, I did 340 watts, and then again, so that gave me and then another eight minute effort, which gave me up to five watts per kilo. Um, so yeah, just make sure you test regularly, in, enjoy your endurance rides, hit those interval numbers, just just love the bike. Cheers for watching. See ya.